I want to talk to you about the issue that you know your loved one needs assisted living, but they don't want to go. I mean, how often does that happen? I see this quite often in the industry, and we often tell families, hey, hey, you as the adult child need to become the parent now. And that is so true, but I want to deal with this topic in a very practical way and some things that you can do to help your loved one and your situation just a little bit better. The first thing you understand is, no senior is jumping for joy doing cartwheels to go to assisted living. I tell my kids this all the time. I'm 50 years old and I say, hey, I know when I turn 85, 90 years old, you know, I'm not going to drive my Camaro around and do what I need to do. And they're going to probably say, hey, dad, hop in the car. Let me take you to the ice cream shop and drop me off somewhere. But I always say I'm not going to go, right? It's the last thing anyone wants to do. But understand, So you got to understand that no one wants to go. And so... You know, it could be a couple different reasons. They're afraid of change. You know, maybe it's a house that they had their family in for 30, 40 years and they're just fearful of change, uh, which is, is practical, very understandable. Uh, number two is they're afraid maybe they can't undertake the move. I mean, they're thinking of all the things they got hanging on the walls and everything in the garage and all the furniture and what do we do with all this? That's a major undertaking. Therefore, I would encourage everyone to do three things. Number one, be sensitive. Be sensitive to your loved one. Understand that, hey, you know, they're, it's not the, um, the best thing for them in their mind, even though you realize, hey, they need some help. They need two or three of activities of daily living taking care of for them. They need some help showering. They need med management, whatever it may be. But understand too that, hey, it's, it's a very sensitive moment. So be sensitive, be understanding if you can. And number two, you might have to back off a little bit. That's a very practical thing, and not too many people will tell you this, but you know, you can only press that button so many times, right? It's a hot button, it's a it's an issue. It's you know, every time you go to their house, they're gonna say, Oh, here comes that topic again. He's trying to get me out of the house, he's trying to get me somewhere else and try to take control of my life and, and all that. Don't fall into that. Just give it some time. And then thirdly, kind of a practical thing to do too is if they've heard this from you so many times. Maybe it's time to bring in somebody else that they actually trust as well. Now, not they don't trust and love you, but just kind of helps to hear it from someone else. Maybe bring in a pastor or a priest or maybe a physician. The next doctor's appointment you take them to and maybe you can kind of you know, prep the doctor. Say, hey, you might want to mention this. You know, It's something that we feel as a family that would be best for our mom or dad and we'd love your support. Reach out. That Maybe it's a trusted friend that your mom or dad knows and, and they would encourage them to do this. Let me give you three strategies that you can implore when you're talking about moving your loved one to a place and they just don't want to go. All right. Number one, emphasize that they're not going to be alone. They're not going to, I mean, oftentimes, I remember one of my grandmothers um, back in the day when granddad passed away for like three years of her life. She was in a home, it was oftentimes dark, and the TV was just on. She was in the same kind of, um, bathrobe all day long. There was no sense of uh, purpose in her life. And then uh, I wasn't part of this process because I was too little at the time, but my family ended up moving her to an assisted living and she was so excited. It was unbelievable. I remember her coming to me and going one day going, Matthew, now on Fridays, I can't do anything because I'm in charge of the popcorn during movie time at where I live now. And I thought, how cool is that? She had a purpose. So understand, let them know, hey, you're not going to be alone, okay? That's a great thing. The second strategy I would give you is encourage them that they, they're not going to have any stress about maintaining their home anymore. I mean, they're not going to have to wash dishes anymore. They're not going to have to cook anymore. They're not going to have to clean anymore. There's all kinds of things that go in. Uh, it goes into keeping a house maintained, right? They're not going to have to do any of that anymore. And then also, finally, what I would encourage you to uh, stress to them is that this assisted living community will take care of a lot of their needs. 
I mean, oftentimes they have a doctor on site or at least a doctor that uh, shows up every 30 days. Uh, physical therapy could be provided. There's exercise for them, uh, entertainment uh, for the activities. Could be movie night like my grandma or could be uh, playing bingo or uh, hanging out playing cards or just socializing around the uh, dining room table. And all her meals, all their meals are taken care of. I mean, that's incredible. I would encourage you to hit those strategy uh, points. And I think your conversation with your loved one will go a lot better than just saying, hey, suck it up, you gotta go, all right? It's the best place for you. And, and try to stay away from that kind of conversation and be sensitive, like I said earlier in this video. Come in from a place of understanding, that knowing that no senior wants to go to an assisted living, but you know that they need this and it's gonna better their life. So be a source of encouragement and continue to think the best for your loved one and I pray all goes well with you.